everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa Alistway, and on this channel, you will find a variety of inspirational and informational videos. So if that sounds good to you and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. My guest today is April Mandisi, who is an ultra runner. Today, she is going to share with us her 100 pounds weight loss journey in the hopes of motivating and inspiring others on their own weight loss journey. Welcome, April. Good morning. Good morning. So let's start kind of from the beginning. Did you struggle with um, being overweight and obese in your childhood? No. No. Not in your right. Go ahead. In your adolescence. No. no. Not until thirty. I was thirty, 30. years old, and yeah. Okay. So did did the weight come on? slowly there's like a term we call creeping obesity where people gain a pound a, a year no big deal but over 20 years wow you look down or did it come on a lot at one time it came on pretty quick because you know my, my early 30s um pretty much 30 to 37 i was heavy so yeah so so 30 to so over that period how much weight had you gained gosh um well let's see um 100 pounds, yeah, right around 100, 100 pounds. pounds. Okay, so in a seven year span, you, you put on 100 pounds. So it, right. so well, I mean, would you mind was, uh, maybe yeah. discussing some of the factors that led to that 100 pound uh, weight gain? No, oh, I married my high school sweetheart at the age of 19. So, you know, after, after high school, um, we got married, we have two kids together. And then through our 20s, we were both, you know, fit and, um, you know, just raising small, small children. And, and um, we hit 30 and it just we started eating out a lot, a lot of fast food. And um, mm -hmm. we both put on weight. Uh, we both, you know, like I said, put on quite a bit of weight and just coming home after work and laying down on the couch and, you know, not exercising, not, no, no exercising. Um, just a lot of bad habits. Yeah. A lot of stress. I guess you deprioritized your yeah, health. Yeah, I, I know. For I, I, I went through, I'm, I know I went through depression. So, I mean, I was, like I said, overweight. I was just working, coming home and, you know, just. It was yes. hard, so. Yeah. Depression can make it very difficult to overcome, to feel like eating right, to feel like exercising, to feel good in one owns body. Um, so let me ask you, uh, you know, cause having that extra hundred pounds on your body, most people cannot know what that feels like. They don't know what that feels like. You do. And you can empathize with others who have that amount of weight on their body. What does that feel like? It's terrible. I mean, I had so much back pain and uh, something my doctor wanted me to do for years. She wanted me to have a breast reduction. And she said that will help with the back pain. And I just, I mean, like I had two kids and I said, I don't have time for that, you know, and, and I just, I dealt with the pain and that was hard. I had arthritis um, in my back as well and my right hip. Mm -hmm. And like I said, and then the back pain mm -hmm. and it was all from the weight from being so heavy, you know, and once I made that decision to finally go and have the breast reduction, I no longer have problems with the arthritis. Um, and that's how I was able to start working out. Oh, wow. Amazing. Um, so that's, that's a good question with the medical care system. Um, did you feel supported when you would go in and see your doctor and what did they tell you and, um, recommend and how did, how did you feel about the medical care system during this time? I, I mean, she, she kept telling me I need to get the weight off, but my back hurt so bad. I mean, I, I couldn't, like, I could not go and work out. It wasn't until after the breast reduction, and then I thought, "Wow, this like, I, my back didn't hurt anymore," and that's when I was able to actually start walking. And then I started running, and I fell in love with running. And I was at the gym for three or four hours. It just completely, completely changed my life having the breast reduction. Wow, that's that's amazing that that one surgery really was the turning point. Because I was going to ask you, what was the turning point for you? And it sounds like that surgery was a lifesaver. Yes, that's, that's how it all started. 
because wow. I don't think I would have been able to, I never went to a gym before in my life. I mean, like I was just kind of always fit. I mean, I, I wasn't running in my twenties or even as, you know, a teenager. Um, I was never a runner. I was really never an athlete. Um, I mean, I played softball in school, mm-hmm. but that was it. Um, so, but I, I just, I was never heavy, like I said, until I put the weight on when I was 30. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so then I, after the breast reduction, I joined a gym and and was doing all kinds of workouts. Like I said, the, you know, walking, running. Okay. So did your fam, was your family on board with supporting you during that time? Did they also exercise and, um, uh, So my ex-husband, um, he, I I wish he would have got on board with me, but, and I tried, but you know, they have to be ready. And unfortunately he was not ready to, you know, take that journey. So, um, you know, he's, he still has the weight, unfortunately, but, um, but yeah, so, I mean, but I would just, he would still eat what he wanted to eat and I would eat my healthy food that I was <laughs> making for myself. But our, our kids were healthy. They were very involved in sports. And, and my daughter was actually a runner, mm-hmm. um, which I, the last couple of years, you know, I, before she graduated, I was running with her. Mm-hmm. And I thought all these years she ran through high, you know, through school. And um, I wish I, I could have done that with her. And I never understood, you know, she would run and I said, you really enjoy running? Because it was something that I, I thought that would be miserable to me. Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, and then when I started running, I, we ran together for a couple of years. So that was that's amazing. Nice. That's amazing. I think that's, that's so key because I know in some couples where weight is an issue, you can have one couple that's not on board and they'll try to sabotage your goals and bring you down and don't lose the weight. Don't, don't get better looking than me. You know, it can be, it can really play on somebody's psychology. If you don't have that support and you have to be really strong. And it sounds like you were very mindful with your goals and what you were trying to accomplish. He was supportive. I mean, he was proud every day I would weigh, oh, and, you know, and I'm like, Oh, I lost, you know, two more pounds or three more pounds. And he was very supportive. Um, he just couldn't, he's like, I can't eat what you're eating. And, you know, I, he just, wasn't ready, but uh. yeah. So did you do, so to improve your nutrition and your exercise, did you like make an appointment with a registered dietitian, a personal trainer, or did you self-teach yourself with the internet? What did you do? I really, I didn't know what to eat. And um, I'll admit, I still struggle with my nutrition. Um, A lot of people ask me for, you know, about my diet and, you know, my nutrition. And I, that's something I, I really cannot help people with only because I still struggle to this day with it. Um, so when I lost the weight and I went to the doctor and I had actually really got on to me and she said, you took it to the extreme. She said, I'm about to tell you, you have an eating disorder. That's, I mean, she said, you lost too much. So let me stop and you there. How fast did you lose that hundred pounds? in seven months Woo. and um, I couldn't understand that when she said you've lost too much, you know, and, and I thought I've worked my butt off to, <laughs> to lose this weight and I was all excited and um, yeah, she wasn't happy with how much I lost. And Like you lost it too fast? Was she worried that you were gonna put it all back on? It was just talking to her about what I was eating, which was very, very little. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I think I had just, because I wasn't eating very much, the weight did come off fast. And, um, she told me that I needed to go find a trainer. I needed it. She sent me to a nutritionist. Um, so I had to learn, you know, how to, you know, I needed to eat more calories. So that was really hard for me to do. Um, but I finally, you know, figured it out. Um, there are still days that, I will not eat. I'll get up and I may have 500 calories for the entire day. And I know that it's not right. That is not healthy. I would not tell anyone to do that. But for me, I think it's, I'm always going to struggle with it. Um, You know, just being overweight. I don't ever want to go back to that again. So 
and then, you know, I think so many people ask how I can do these long runs. Yes. And it's, it's weird because for me, I just, I tell myself, you do it, like just do it. I know not everyone can do that. You know, um, a lot of people will carve up like the week before a race. I don't do that. I will not do that because I'll weigh the day of the race, you know, and again, something else you shouldn't do weigh every day. I know that, but for me, that's what works for me. I have to see that certain number on a scale. And so uh, that's why during my long runs, I will eat. A lot of people don't eat very much because their stomach may get upset. I eat, I eat a lot when I'm running the hundred milers. You'll see me pigging out at the aid stations. Um, but that's what works for me. You know, that's, and I know I have to eat because I didn't fuel my body the right way before the race. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just don't want people to think that, wow, she's got it all together. She knows what she's doing because I don't, (laughs) (laughs) I just, I go out there and I just make myself, you know, it's, I said, it's, um, it's mind over matter. You know, you have to to just be determined enough to. So just kind of rewind. So at 37, you decided to lose the hundred pounds. You lost it in seven months through various, I guess, um, lots of exercise. I imagine awesome. hours a day, really strict diet. Um, so, and, and how old are you now? 44. 44. So you've been doing this, I guess, regularly for these yes. last, what, what, what is the amount? Seven years and running. So when did you start doing ultra runs and thinking, Hey, that's a great idea. So my first ultra was, um, well, my first half was in February, 2017. So that was literally seven months after I just got all the weight off. And my daughter, like I said, she was a runner and there was a half uh, marathon 13.1 that that I would always take her to in Sarasota, Florida. And, um, and I would just go and I would sit there and I would wait for her at the finish line. And so when she was doing that run that year, I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to run a half. She's like, mom, you haven't trained. I said, I can do this, you know? And, and I did it. And that following month, I decided to go to Myrtle beach and run a marathon. (laughs) And I ran the marathon 26.2 miles. And I was with, some of the people after the race and I was telling them it was my first marathon. And uh, so that was eight months after the weight loss. And they said, you gonna do another one? I said, nope, I said, I'm done. I ran a marathon, never in my life thought I would run a marathon. So I said, yeah, I'm I'm done. Next thing you know, the following month, I signed up for a 50K, which is 32 miles. So I ran that in Chicago. And after that, the following month, I signed up for a 50 miler. <laughs> so yeah, my, so my first ultra was in April, which was the, the 32 miler. And then I just went on from there. I just, I just, yeah, I fell in love with it. And I was doing like an ultra every month. <laughs> wow. So what was it that you fell in love about it? it that is my, um, that's my outlet. That is just, if I'm stressed, um, just not having a good day, you know, I'll, when I'm finished with work, I just, I go out and I run. And most of the time I'm crying when I'm running. (laughs) It's just, that's my, that's my escape, you Mm -hmm. know? So. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Um, So let me ask you this. If, um, if somebody was going to, you know, start training for an ultra run, what recommendations or ideas would you uh, provide them? Um, that's so hard for me to answer only because I've never followed a training program and I know most people do. Um, I mean, I just kind of went all in, you know, so it's hard. Like I said, when people ask me for advice, um, because I don't want anyone to get injured. Um, I did finally, I mean, it was about a year later. So I was running like, you know, all these ultras and I did end up getting a stress fracture, a tibia stress fracture. Um, and, uh, 
that was difficult when I, I went to the specialist and he told me not to run for a month. And I had a hundred miler that month, actually. <laughs> actually, I had a hundred miler and a marathon scheduled. I had signed up for both. Mm-hmm. And he said, you cannot run the hundred miler. He said, you'll be in so much pain, you know? And I said, what about the marathon? And he said, you're going to be in pain, but he said, you're not going to make it any worse because it was a grade four to be a stress fracture. <laughs> and the marathon, I was actually running with my daughter. So I didn't go to the hundred miler, of course, but I did run the marathon having a stress fracture, which again, I wouldn't tell anyone they should do that. But uh, um, so I ran the marathon. It was my longest marathon ever, <laughs> but I finished it and, and I went back and it wasn't healed. And he's, you know, I said, I ran the marathon and he said, well, he said, you cannot run for a month. <laughs> so I did stay off of it for a month and I've been fine ever since. So I, I did have, like I said, the one injury, um, so I guess my advice would be maybe not do an ultra every month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like the way I, I, I was, but, uh, you know, and I think you, ha- it's very individualistic, right? You have to listen to your own body and I, and everybody has different, I guess, drive components. I mean, can't compare what drives you with what drives somebody else. And I think, um, you know, it's a very individualistic path that people have to decide what's going to work best for them and I think for everything that I have as much running as I do just having the one injury I feel pretty lucky Mm -hmm. um because there's you know I don't have any other problems like I said Mm -hmm. my arthritis it's I don't feel that now you know just Mm -hmm. having I mean having that weight off makes a huge difference Mm -hmm. and that's why I understand when uh, you know there's other people that you know, I want to get the weight off. I understand how hard it is because like I said, if I would not have had that breast reduction, I don't think I could have started working out and I probably wouldn't have. I mean, it, it's painful. Mm-hmm. So how do you go and, and try to run or walk and mm-hmm. go to the gym if you're in pain? Mm-hmm. It's just, it's hard. So, but um, having that back relief, that just, you know, that was, like I said, the starting to, to get me into the gym and, and get that weight off. And I feel so much better. And yes. So do you plan on continuing running as long as you can into old age? Yeah, I want to, I, I know it. Um, I know it'd catch up to me eventually. I'm sure, you know, your joints and all that, you know, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I want to run as long as I can. Mm -hmm. um, So when you're running the hundred miles, what's your mindset? Is it just one, one step in front of the other, I'll get there. Or how are you thinking through that process? Yeah, just, um, I try to just, I mean, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. It's one step in front of the other. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, it's, uh, I just want to hurry up and get to that finish line, but I'm looking at my watch all the time and I know about how long it's going to take me. And I'm like, I still have 30 more hours or, you know, it's a long time to be on your feet, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, it's a, heat. I, you know, I, I think about the finish line a lot. I think about the feeling I'm going to have. Um, I mean, that's a huge accomplishment to, mm-hmm. to do something like that. And For I sure. just, it, when I think about crossing the finish line, I just start smiling and I'm like, yeah, I got this, you know, mm-hmm. I'm in pain, but, mm-hmm. but I'm, you know, I'm going to get through and, and it's going to be worth it in the end. Yeah. It's like visualizing those endorphins that you're going to earn. And if you, and your brain remembers them. And so you just have to like, know the more you build it, it's like a muscle that you can keep drawing on. And I think those races definitely provide you with that goal every month, you know, that you can cash in on those endorphins with these events. Yeah, most definitely. So, um, I know you're, you're really big on inspiring and motivating others in their weight loss journey. Um, let's talk about that a little bit. What's, what's your impetus for all of that? Just, just because I know how good I feel and I want others to be able to feel that, you know, um, like I said, just after getting that weight off and not having the back pain or the arthritis, or I had high blood pressure, you know, all of that's great now. And, I want others to be able to feel that way. 
because like I said, I've been there. I know how they feel. It, you know, it's terrible, you know? And when you can't get out and run with your kid and I'm thinking I missed out on years, I could have been running with my daughter and I'm in the house laying on the couch because I'm in so much pain and she's out, you know, running and I'm, it makes me sad thinking about that, you know? And uh, so I just, I want others to know that, you know, I just, yeah, if they can just get the weight off, they're going to feel so much better. Mm -hmm. It just completely changed my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm so active. I'm always doing something if I, you know, at the gym, walking, running, and I'm not always running. Sometimes I'll go out, you know, on the trail and it just, I'll want it to be a run, but it doesn't always happen. It may just mm -hmm. turn into a five hour walk, which is fine. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with just walking. Some Absolutely. people think, oh, you're always running, running. No, I'm not always running. There's nothing wrong with walking. If that's all you can do for, you know, for now, then just get out and walk because that's all I did in the beginning. I didn't just take off running. It was two weeks after the surgery. I went out and I, I walked a mile and I thought, wow, I just walked a mile. It's been a long time since, <laughs> since I had walked a mile. And I got back to the house and I turned around and I went out for another walk or an, another mile. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, and I walked, it, I walked for a month before I started running. It was mm -hmm. nothing but just going out every evening and walking. Mm -hmm. So. Very good. Um, so I know it's important, uh, the recovery phase of all of this strenuous exercise. Let's talk about that because I know some people don't even make the connection of how important sleep is to their health and how it can, if you don't have good sleep, it can affect your mental health. It can affect your physical health. So um, let's talk about the recovery and how you, how you practice that self-care recovery with all of this um, strenuous exercise. So the recovery is hard for me as well. <laughs> um, but Yes, the sleep is very important, um, even though I could stay at the gym all night working out, you know, and I have to just force myself to try to get into bed and, you know, because, yeah, you, you do need a good night's sleep. Yeah. Um, after a race, I usually like a hundred miler, I'll take about two days off and then I'm ready to go out and, you know, have a long walk, not necessarily a run, but just a long walk or I'll be back in the gym. So for, for myself. I feel okay after two days. Some people will take a week or two off, which, you know, that's okay. That's what works for them. That's what their body needs. Again, mm -hmm. it's, you just have to listen to your body. And, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, for me, it's just a couple of days and I'm ready to, to get back out there. Ready to go. Um, so who inspires you or where do you draw your inspiration and motivation from to, to continue and to stay this active and focus on your health? So I, I guess for me, it's, um, I'm, just, I always want to do better for myself. Even when I go out and I'll do a run on my own, the next time I go do a run on my own, I'm trying to beat that time. So the one person that I guess inspires me that would be David Goggins. Um, once I, I was running a marathon a couple of years ago and I was actually struggling and someone ran up beside me and started talking to me about David Goggins. I had never heard of the guy. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, Googled him afterwards and, um, now I, you know, just everything that he's accomplished. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm like, this guy's crazy, but this is the kind <laughs> of stuff that I love, you know, yeah. like I would love to do the stuff that, that he's you know, accomplished, um, that drives me. And, um, so yeah, so I guess David Goggins is, is the one that I look up to and yeah, you guys are, are very similar in the sense that you both lost a hundred pounds. Yeah. Very, yeah y'all, y'all can empathize with what that feels like to carry that amount of weight and to, um, make the decision, you know, whatever your low point or turning point is, uh, to get it off. And it's, it is a decision that has to be made. And I think he lost his in seven months as well, which I, I thought was, you know, kind of ironic that. Uh, it was in a short amount of time yeah. for sure. No doubt. So you guys both had that like internal fire drive inside you to, sure. to uh, 
get it off. Um, again, maybe not the method that everybody or doctors right. would recommend. Um, but for you, that's your journey and what you went through. And I th think it's still inspirational uh, and very motivating. And I hope somebody who's listening to this today can definitely learn from your experience because uh, you're not alone in what you went through, obviously. There's, I mean, it's like two thirds of Americans are either overweight or obese. I mean, we are definitely at uh, alarming statistically or stat statistically with the rates of obesity in this country. And um, yeah, so um, how do, so have you gained any weight back and how have you dealt with the weight gain relapses? Um, so I did put on, I put on the most 10 pounds, um, which is not a bad weight. Um, I mean, I've, like I said, I, I go to the doctor and they would like for me to stay at that, when I gained 10 pounds, they were like, this is where you need to be. That is not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just for, you know, like I said, I have a certain number that I have to see on the scale every day. And, and I know that may sound silly. Um, to some people, I, and I, again, I know that you shouldn't get on the scale every day, um, but I think it will always be a struggle for me um, because you, I never want to go back. I don't want to have that feeling that I had before. I want to stay active. Um, I want to keep pushing myself to do more. And yeah, so I just. Uh, so when you put that 10 pounds on, were you uh, like, I got to get that 10 pounds off? That's, um, yeah, I had to get that off. And I, I went a few days with eating very little mm -hmm. um, because I'm like, no, I'm not. I felt like, oh no, what's happening? I'm not going to let this happen. I completely freaked out, you know? and. Um, and because you can put it on very quick. I mean, it wouldn't it's take easy. long. It would not take long to yeah. put that weight back on. So you yeah. have to, um, you have to stay focused. You really have to stay strict on, on your diet. And, and yes, I, I know with like COVID and those couple of years have been very stressful. People have put on um, added weight uh, during that time and just kind of like let themselves go. And I think sometimes people think, you know, I'll just lose the weight later. Like it's easy to lose the weight later, which it's, mm -hmm. it's work. And if you've lost a hundred pounds, it's even more work because you, somebody who's never carried that much weight um, may not, you know, know just how much work is involved in keeping that weight off. And, you know, like most of the gyms were closed, but there's still a lot of stuff you can do. You can go to a park and do a lot of workouts on just mm -hmm. even the playground equipment. There's lots of stuff you can do um, to still get those, those uh, lifting workouts in or strength workouts. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, around the house, there's a lot of stuff you can do. So I thought that's not an excuse that the gym is closed. You know, you still have to get those workouts in. Yeah, so, so you try to balance um, you're working out like running because running is mostly just like lower body, your legs. It's good for your cardio, but what about your arms? What about strength? What about flexibility? Like what else do you do to kind of incorporate it? So I do a lot of strength training, um, in the gym, you know, uh, yeah, you want to keep that core strong, of course. Um, I'm not lifting as much as I was, yeah, as I used to. Um, I need to get back to that for lately. It's just been a lot of running. But um, I mean, I still do my, my ab workouts and, uh, but uh, yeah, I need to start lifting again. I've kind of slacked on that, but uh, just, you know, things in life happen and, and I just kind of stop going. I mean, I still go to the gym, but usually when I go, I'm, I'm more focused on my leg workouts or my ab workouts. So I haven't done much upper body, but I, I need to, to get back to that. So. Yeah. So what, what are your current goals that you're working on? Gosh, I mean, I, I want to keep running more, like, you know, farther distances. Um, I mean, I've So you did a 200 two miler, didn't you? I did. Yeah. That it was just a virtual. So I was just out on my own, you know, um, I was out for three nights, four days. <laughs> wow. Okay. Let me stop you. Were you by yourself? Did you have support? Yeah. Oh, I was just, I stayed I would run during the day far away from the house, but then, uh, you know, when it would get dark, I would 
stay closer to the house, but it was really just going up and down streets near near home, um, near the house. And just uh, if I had to refill my, you know, get more hydration or go to the bathroom, I would just stop by the house, go in, you know, do what I needed to do and come right back out. So it was just, yeah. So let me ask you, because woman to woman, as far as a safety issue, because yeah. I think a lot of people are like, wow, I couldn't, I couldn't go for a jog at 10 o'clock at night. No mm -hmm. way, no how, not where I live. Um, what, do, what are you doing to take care of your safety? Yeah. I don't like uh, being out between like 11 and four. I, I don't like those hours at all. But after four, it seems like, you know, you start seeing people heading to work and everything. So I'm, I'm like, fine. But, and, uh, but yeah. I, you know, I carry protection on me and during the late hours, I'm constantly looking behind me. I'm turning around over and over, you know, making sure no one's, you know, creeping up behind me. I've had a few, there's been a few times where I guess someone was following me and I had no problem running up to someone's porch <laughs> and I mm. would run up to their porch and, and then I would turn around and I would watch and they would go on by, you know. So there were a few times where I, I was scared and I thought I would bang on someone's door in a heartbeat. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, that's scary. But if I'm out there trying to accomplish that many miles, I mean. So you're you having have, to also like run out of town, I would imagine, and being in the road, like in the middle of nowhere. Um, I would stay close. Like um, I used to live in West Palm, so I would run around downtown West Palm, or I would go, I was close to A1A. So I would get on A1A, which is right along the water. So that was a beautiful, you know, okay. run. Um, just run there for miles, turn, just lots of turning around, coming back. It's just really up and down streets in the area to, to hit that many miles. Not really a set, you know, I didn't set, wasn't a set course or anything. It was just running until I hit those miles. And are you using like an app? to track your miles um i yeah i have a watch that keeps track of everything mileage time and so, so you just keep going I, to you hit your number mm -hmm. yeah whatever you set out for that day very cool and i guess you also have your nutrition on you i mean so I what type of nutrition yeah. do you yeah. eat when you're um, doing these runs gosh it's not not good <laughs> it's a lot of junk food but again that's what works for me and because I don't have all the junk food, you know, just in my everyday life, um, when I'm running, that is the energy I need. So, you know, that's the fuel I need to keep me going. Um, so I know that's not everyone's going to agree with that, but you know, that's interesting. You know. It's almost like a, you know, cause if it's a candy bar or whatever, that's like a treat, but you're like, Hey, I'm running. So I guess I get, exactly. I get to have this right. treat. I do not care how many calories I have when I'm doing a hundred or more, I'll eat. I have no problem eating then because I know I'm burning a lot of calories. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you yeah. have, um, have, do you have a race you want to do like, um, uh, death Valley or something like that? I would love to do bad water at 135. Um, eventually try to get into that one. Um, I want to continue to do the keys 100. I've, I've done that for two years, uh, two years. Is that and an I, out and back or just one way? Yeah, just what point to point. So uh, okay. you start, you start in Key Largo and you finish in Key West. Okay. It's a beautiful, beautiful course. Yeah. Um, we go over, I think it's, if I remember like 13 bridges you, you grow up, you cross. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So I love that. I love that race. Um, there's another one I, I, I'll be going back to in July, um, the Octopus Ultra in Vero Beach. Um, I didn't make the cutoff this year. I finished it, but I was over by a few hours. Mm. Um, that's a tough one. We were in sand, and that's mm. a killer on your lakes. Absolutely. We're at sand, we're on the road, you know, pavement, on mm -hmm. trails. We were out in a field, which very uneven I mean there's times I'm like stepping in holes and that was tough just the terrain was you know just all different terrain during mm -hmm. that race so I think the cutoff was 32 and I was around 36 hours that's mm -hmm. that's how um, that was a tough one 
but I finished, but I want to go back and definitely make the cutoff this year. And they had, it's in July in Florida. Ooh, so that's going to be hot. That's, that's a tough one. Yeah. And, uh, but I want to go back and redeem myself for, <laughs> um, and, and make that cutoff this year for sure. But, yeah. Um, so you have, you definitely have an internal drive within you and I can hear it. I can sense it. Um, where do you think that comes from? No, because like I said, I was not an athlete growing up, um, never competitive. And I guess just, I, I look back and, you know, I look at my photos being heavy and then I look at the photos of how, you know, small I, I got down to and I'm thinking I'm proud of myself for, you know that's a huge accomplishment and I really did do it on my own I didn't have anyone there was no one else going to the gym with me a lot of people you know they need a workout partner which is fine that some people need that I could go to the gym and stay for three or four hours and I was so focused and so and now, I mean, I'm very competitive. If I see someone in front of me, I want to pass them. <laughs> so I'm like, I just, yeah, I just, I want to keep doing more. And so I'm not sure where it comes from. I, like I said, I guess it's just me wanting to beat myself because I don't know. It's just, I want to do better every time. Every time I do a race, I want to set a PR, you know, and that doesn't always happen, of course. But uh, yeah, I just... That's, that's really cool. You know, I think your, your past has a big part of it because of where you've been and what you've experienced and knowing you don't ever want to go back to that. I think that could be a big, you know, driving force to, you know, maintain this weight loss and to keep it off. Because I know for a lot of people, they can lose the weight, but they can't effectively keep it off. And they just end up yo-yo dieting and they end up like, gaining and losing it. It just throws off like their whole body system, like constantly, you know, their body going up and down in weight. And I think, um, you have settled in and you've really found like, Hey, I'm happy at this weight and I will do my best to maintain this weight. Um, I think it's, you know, a good message. Yeah. Cause that's, um, yeah, you're right. A lot of people do that yo-yo, you know, diet, you know, and I don't want that. Like I said, I mean, at the most it was 10 pounds and I got it off immediately. And because I thought, no, I am not doing this. 10 pounds mm-hmm. creeped up on me and I, and another 10 could creep up, right? You know, mm-hmm. creeping obesity and, is what that we call that, where the weight creeps up pound by yeah. every, you know, little and, by little. And I, I told myself, I said, nope, this is not happening. I'm not going to let this happen. So um, yeah, it's just, like I said, I've worked hard and, you know, why put in all that work if you're going to put the weight back on? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's, you know, it's a mystery because if it, for a lot of people, you know, if we had like an easy solution to obesity, we would have solved it already. We wouldn't have this, um, you know, where the majority of Americans are overweight or obese. And so I think, uh, you know, this is definitely a topic that people need to pay attention to in their own lives and to stay connected to their body. And I think part of what you're doing is you're always checking in, you know, Weighing yourself every day that works for you. Um, I would say don't be obsessive about it, but you also cannot abandon yourself or ignore yourself or what's going on with yourself. And sometimes people just neglect themselves and it catches up because the body keeps score. And I think um, you definitely have to pay attention. You know, that's, that's just going to be part of the formula for maintaining effective weight loss. You have to. <laughs> so. Yeah, most definitely. Um, so we're getting to the end here. Do you have any like final thoughts or anything else you would like to share with the audience with regards to, you know, weight loss? Just, you know, just get out there and start with a walk. Like I said, I mean, you don't have to go out and run. You don't have to go to the gym for four or five hours. Just go and take a walk, you know? Um, like I said, that's how I started. Just, just a, a one or two mile walk and over time you know you're, you're going to feel better and that's what I want for other people I really do want them to feel better because I'm just I'm amazed you know that like I said I don't have the arthritis anymore I don't have the back pain no more high blood pressure medicine it just it feels so good 
And, you know, of course the nutrition plays a huge role. You have to change that, of course. And I did. No more fast food. <laughs> Never eat fast food. Um, that's a uh, that's definitely not going to help. And you don't but, miss uh, it. If you, if you stop eating don't. fast food for a while, your taste buds change and yeah. you're, you're not going to be, it's not going to feel appealing or appetizing when you bite into that Big Mac, you're going to be like, mm -hmm. Ugh. so yeah, the more sure. you can get away from it, you'll realize that it's, it's just poor quality food. I mean, I like my dinner. Every night. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Dinner was usually Arby's or McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I don't know the last time I had Arby's or McDonald's now. You know, it's been so many years. Um, so, yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> healthy. Sorry, I have someone leaving. No worries. <laughs> but, um, you have to eat healthy and it's okay to treat yourself. I mean, there's nights where I'll have some cookies or something mm -hmm. and it's okay to do that. And, and I know that. So, I'm I'm learning. Yeah, I'm still learning the nutrition. So. Most of we're always learning throughout life. That's just part of it. We grow and we learn. That's that's life's purpose and mission that we do that. So very cool. Well, thank you, April. I appreciate you sharing your story. I know that it's going to help somebody today who's listening to it and be inspired by it. And hopefully they can make their first step and have their turning point and be on to a better path for health. Thank you. So. So, so if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share and subscribe and hit the bell to be alerted to when the next video drops. Thanks for watching. Thank you.